Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the general ledger or the T account. This is part three of our series on accounting for beginners. In part one, we looked at the accounting equation and we looked at various examples in completing the accounting equation. But we also explained how to identify what is an asset, what is an equity and what is a liability. In part two, we looked at the general journal and we did some journal entries using the same examples that we looked at in part one. So here in part three, we are looking at the same examples as well that we looked at in part two when we completed the general journal. So if you have not checked out part one and part two, I would strongly encourage you to check those ones out before checking this one out, which will greatly help you in thoroughly understanding this one here. So when we're doing the general ledger, or the T account. What we are doing there is that we are taking each account and opening a ledger for it. So let's take the same examples that we looked at in part one and part two. Here's the first one that we looked at. We saw that the owner invested in the business by depositing 20,000 rand. What we had to do here is to identify what the two accounts were. And in this particular one, if you can remember, we identified that the first one is bank because money was coming into the bank and the second one was capital. And that is why we did this journal entry. We debited bank and this is the general journal and we credited the capital with 20,000 ran and we put the narration there. Now the question is, what if you're asked to do the general ledger for this particular transaction? What would you do? Well, it's quite easy. We open a T account for the bank account and we put the debit on the left hand side and credit on the right hand side. That is how you do a T account. So here's how it will look. You put the debit on the left hand side and that's always going to be the case for whatever account you'll be looking at and the credit on the right hand side. Once you've opened your T account or your general ledger account for bank, what you need to do is to put the amount for bank on the side that it should be. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you can see here, we've already done the general journal or the journal entry. We can see we have bank and bank is on the debit side. So if bank is on the debit side, we have to put the amount here on the debit side. But what is the detail going to be? Well, the detail is going to be however that money came to the bank account. In other words, you can see the transaction here has got bank and capital. Those are the two accounts in this particular transaction. So the description is going to be capital. So what you're saying by doing that is that money came into the bank and it was as a result of a capital contribution by the owner. So we're going to put date and usually start by putting the date by the way. So I'm just going to put a date here since we're not given a date for this particular transaction just to show you how it looks. And that is exactly how it looks. I've put 30 April 2021 as just an example because we're not given the date. And the detail is capital and we put the 20,000 rand. Remember, bank is on the debit side. We have to put it on the debit side. And why do we put capital here? Because we are showing what was the money for. Well, it was a capital contribution, so you put capital here. Again, we have done other lessons on the general ledger, and what we explained there as well is that you cannot put the name of the ledger account as the detail as well. What do I mean by that? Well, we're doing the ledger for bank, so you cannot put the description or the detail here as bank. That would be incorrect. You never do that, and you will never see that in a correct ledger account or T account. The detail has to be the opposite account, or in this case, what the money was for and as I mentioned it's capital all right now that we've done for bank let's do for capital again we're going to open the T account for capital and we know that capital increases on the credit side as per part two that we looked at we showed exactly how to determine whether it increases on the debit side or on the credit side and as you can see here capital is on the credit side so we're going to open the T account for capital and then obviously we have debit and credit and this time it's on the credit side as you can see with capital and we put the same date as I said using it as an example 30 April 2021 and what is the detail going to be? The detail is obviously going to be bank and that is exactly how it's going to look. You start with the date and you put the opposite account which is bank and you put the amount 20,000 rand and obviously you put in the opposite account to show uh, how did the capital come in or what did the owner contribute? And in this case, it was contributing money. And that is why we have bank there. So you can see this is how you do the general ledger. And you can see how it relates to the general journal or 
the journal entry. And obviously, if you are asked to do the general ledger account for either bank or capital or any other ledger account, you may not be asked to do the journal entry as we have done here. But I wanted to show you the relation between the two and you do not need to do the journal entry before you do the T account. Okay, I'm just showing you the connection between the two. And if you understood lesson one and lesson two, it would be very easy to apply those principles we explained and the theory we went through in doing the T account. Remember the T account is for specific accounts and you know what you need to debit for bank. Bank is an asset increases on the debit side as per the acronym we looked at in part two. And you put the second account which is in this particular transaction. I hope it's made sense and it will make sense as we go through the other transactions. So let's look at the second one. Here we're told that we bought inventory on credit 3,000 Rand. So the company bought inventory on credit for 3,000 Rand and we had to determine what the two accounts were and it did that in part one and part two. So it was inventory because inventory is an asset increases on the debit side and trade payables is a liability increases on the credit side. And obviously the narration here is bought inventory on credit. Now let's do the T accounts for inventory and for trade payables. Now when we open the T account for inventory, we know that inventory, obviously, as you can see, it's an asset. It's increasing on the debit side. So we open the T account, debit on the left hand side and credit on the right hand side. And we start with the date and we put the detail. What is the detail going to be for inventory? It's going to be trade payables and we put the amount as 3000 rand. So I'm sure it's getting easier by now. You can see that whenever you open a T account, you put it on its side and the detail is the opposite account. And in this case, for under inventory, it's trade payables. Like I said, it would be incorrect for us to put inventory under inventory. You can't do that. All right. Now let's do for trade payables. What I'd encourage you to do here is after I've opened each transaction that we're going to look at, attempt to draw the T account. I mean, it should take you a few seconds to draw it on a piece of paper and do the T account as we've been doing. So go ahead and do for trade payables and you can pause for the following transactions that we're also going to look at. So go ahead. Okay, I hope you've attempted it. So trade payables is a liability. As you can see, it's on the credit side. So we're going to open a T account for trade payables, put the date on the credit side, and the detail is going to be inventory. And we're going to put the amount as 3,000 Rand, as you can see over there. All right, let's do the third one. Here it is. We are told that we paid the telephone account by check 700 Rand. We looked at this transaction in part one and part two as well. And we identified what the two accounts are telephone, which is an expense account increases on the debit side and bank, which is an asset account. It's decreasing on the credit side because we are paying for the telephone account. So let's do the T account for telephone expense and for bank. So as we open for the telephone account, debit on the left hand side and credit on the right hand side and we put the date on the debit side because telephone is an expense increases on the debit side and we put the detail as bank and we put 700 rand all on the debit side because the telephone account is an expense increasing on the debit side as I've been saying. What about the bank account? Well, I'm sure it's quite easy by now. We open the T account and bank in this case is on the credit side because we we're paying out money. So it's decreasing and it's an asset. So we put the date on the credit side and we put the detail as telephone and we put the amount there 700 rand. Let's look at the fourth transaction, bought inventory by check 1,500 rand. Again, the two accounts here is inventory. It's increasing. We put it on the debit side. Bank is decreasing because we're buying the inventory by check and the narration there is bought inventory by cash all right so let's open the t accounts for the two for inventory obviously we put it on the debit side and the detail is going to be bank and we put the 1500 rand there and what about for bank account as you can see it's on the credit side so we're going to put the amount on the credit side together with the date and the detail is inventory and that is how you do that one let's do the fifth one Pay the supplier 3,000 Rand in settlement of account. Here you can see we are moving a bit faster because it's all the same. As you can see, the principles are applied exactly in the same manner. Trade payables, since we are paying the supplier's account, it's decreasing and it's a liability. Liability decreases on the debit side and bank is also decreasing because our bank account is reducing because we're paying the supplier so it goes on the credit side so let's do the t accounts for the two trade payables this time as you can see it's on the debit side and put the date and the detail there is bank because we're paying for trade payables so it's bank and the amount there is three thousand rand 
and then we do for a bank account you can see we put the date 30 april 2021 again here with the datings we're not given the date for these transactions if you're wondering where am i getting this date i'm just putting the date as an example for you but you will definitely be given the date for your particular transactions that you'll be looking at and then we we'll put there the description as trade payables and 3000 rand so you can see how it works and what you put as the detail it's a second account so obviously the first step is knowing what the two accounts are or identifying what two accounts are involved in this transaction and remember we mentioned in part one that you can have more than two accounts in a particular transaction so we are doing simple transactions here just showing you that you have at least two accounts for each once you've identified the two and you looked at part two where we showed you a tip on how to know what you need to debit and what you need to credit then it's easy for you to do this t account so let's look at the sixth one bought stationary by check 150 ren stationary is an expense account we put it on the debit side and we credit bank because we're buying the stationary by check so let's open the t account here it is for stationary since it's on the debit side put the date and the detail there is bank because we're buying the stationery by check and the amount there is 150 rand and for the bank account since it's on the credit side we put everything on the credit side the date and we put the detail as stationery and we put the 150 rand let's move on to the seventh one the owner drew a business check of 2000 rand for his personal use so the owner drew a check for his personal use so again we have drawings here drawings is an equity account and it's decreasing the equity of the business so we put it on the debit side and we put bank on the credit side and this is exactly how it looks for the two t accounts and i'm sure it's quite easy by now let's look at the next one the tenant paid the monthly rent to the company 2500 rand so obviously the two accounts are bank here bank is increasing we put on the debit side and rent income is an income account increases on the credit side and this is exactly how the t accounts look if you're asked to do the bank account and you're asked to do the rental income account that's exactly what you would do let's look at one more the owner contributed a vehicle worth 30,000 rand to the business we identified what the two accounts are First one is vehicle because the vehicle is coming into the business, we debited it. And capital because the owner is contributing to the business. And we said when the owner contributes to the business, it doesn't have to be cash only. It can be an asset and in this case, it's a vehicle. So when you're doing the vehicle account, we put it on the debit side because it's an asset and the detail there is capital and we put the 30,000 rand. For capital, it's on the credit side. So we put it on the credit side, we put the date and the detail there is vehicle meaning we're showing what the capital contribution was as you saw with the very first one it was cash so we put bank but in this one here it's contributing a vehicle so we put vehicle and we put thirty thousand rand i hope it's made sense i hope you now know how to do t accounts or ledger accounts when you're given a particular transaction now sometimes you're asked to balance an account or to balance off a t account so that's exactly what we're going to show you now but we're going to look at specifically for the bank account if you looked at the transactions from number one to number nine what was involved in the bank account well here are the transactions that we have in the bank account we're asked to balance the account on the 30th of april 2021 so when they ask you to balance the account on a specific date, you look at all the transactions that affected that particular account. And in this case, it's bank. Remember the very first one we had was capital. So money was brought into the business by the owner or the owner contributed money to the business who put 20,000 Rand. The second one was telephone account that we were paying 700 Rand and so forth. And if you can go back through the lesson, you will see that for the nine transactions that we looked at, what affected bank, we have put all of them on this particular T account. So I want to show you just how to balance an account or how to balance off an account. What you do next here is to put your total. Now, what do you do when you're doing your T account or what total do you put when you're doing your T account? Well, you compare the debit side and the credit side. What do I mean by that? You add the debit side and write down the total somewhere you add the credit side write down the total somewhere whichever side is big all right and in this case if we are to add the debit side and the credit side and i know which side is big because i've calculated it and you can even see here we have twenty thousand and two thousand five hundred on the debit side and here you have small amounts all of them will definitely not add up to twenty thousand so the debit side is the bigger side twenty thousand plus the 2,500 rand, so it's 22,500 rand. So whichever side is bigger, you put that total 
on both sides. Very important. You have to put that total on both sides. So let's put the 22,500 on both sides all right so when they ask you to balance off the account you add the debit side see how much it is you add the credit side see how much it is and look at which one is bigger whichever one is bigger you put that total on both sides on both the debit side and the credit side once you have done that you ask yourself which side is the smaller side obviously we know the smaller side is the credit side so the question we ask ourselves is how much is missing on the credit side to make it equal the debit side in other words, how much is short on the credit side to make it equal 22,500 rand? However much that is short, you need to calculate it. Obviously, we'll take 22,500 minus all these to get our answer. Or if you had calculated or if you had added everything together and you have the answer for the credit side, you just take 22,500 minus the sum of everything here that you would have added together. And then it will give you how much is missing on the credit side to make it equal the debit side. Once you have that, you write it down as balance carried down. And this is exactly what we did. We put balance carried down. And we saw that on the credit side, we are missing 15,150 rand to make it equal the debit side or to make it equal 22,500 rand. I hope it's making sense. You put the bigger side on both sides and then you look at the smaller side and you ask yourself how much is missing on the smaller side to make it equal the bigger side. And in our case, it was 15,150 rand. And the detail there is going to be balance carried down. I'm sure you've heard that somewhere balance carried down and it's not balance brought down yet it's balance carried down once you have put your balance carried down with the amount that was missing or that was short on the credit side to make it equal the debit side you come back to the debit side you, you go to the bigger side and in this case it's the debit side and you put what is called balance brought down and you put the date as the following day what do i mean by that as you can see here we have 1 may 2021 how did I get one May? Well, I know we are doing it as a 30th of April 2021. So the following day is obviously the first day of the following month, which is 1 May 2021. And you put it as balance brought down. And you put the amount of 15,150 Rand, which is the same as the balance carried down you've put here. And it will always be the same. Why do we do that? What are we saying? We are saying when we are heading to the next month, to May 2021, the balance brought down or the balance in our bank account should be 15,150 Rand or is 15,150 Rand. That is how you balance off a T account. So let's say you are now in May and you are doing the exact same exercise for May. When you are starting with the first transaction, you're going to start here by writing 1st of May 2021. Let's say you're doing for May 2021 and you write balance brought down. Exact same thing you've written here. You will start with it on top here and you will put 15,150 and then you put the other transactions down. That is if you have already headed to the next month. Or if they told us at the beginning of April 2021, the balance for the bank account was 10,000 rand. What would we have done? We would have written here 1st April 2021 and put balance brought down and you put the amount of 10,000 Rand as an example there. So what are we saying here? We are saying balance brought down is used when we balance off the account or is the very last thing that we put at the very bottom of the bigger side as we have done here. And you also put it as the opening balance for that particular account. So if an account has an opening balance, you put balance brought down and you put that opening balance. I hope it's made sense. I've explained a lot of details. If you do not understand something, you can just scroll back in the lesson and try and listen to it again. And if you like another example where we went into another great detail on the ledger account or the T account, you'll find it in the link in the description below where we specifically just looked at the general ledger account. All right, this was part three of our accounting for beginners series. You'll find part four in the link in the description below, which is on accruals. We look at accruals specifically and how you account for them in your books. See you in the next one.